Mr. Turnbull, in your memoir, you said in your dealings with President Trump, you found him no less rational than other billionaires you worked with. And despite your differences, as businessmen, you spoke the same language. In light of the events of the past week and the President's blatant and disturbing efforts to erode the democratic process of the United States as we know it, do you still consider to speak the same language as him? Well, I was talking... Akhil, thank you for that. I mean, I was talking about the negotiations we had over trade. Uh, the... You know, Trump wanted to... Trump imposed uh, uh, tariffs uh, on, on steel and aluminium from every country in the world, including America's closest allies, including Canada and <coughs> the UK and so forth. But I persuaded him not to do so on Australia. And it was a... You know, it was quite a... It wasn't a... Uh, I didn't have a row with him. I had a huge row with him over the refugee deal, which is quite uh, well known because the White House, someone in the White House, leaked the transcript of the discussion. But the um, <clears throat> but on trade, it was a back and forth, and I go into that in some detail in the book because it's quite a, I think, a good example of how persistent advocacy by an Australian leader can serve Australia's interests. But Trump, it, I basically persuaded Trump to change his mind. Now, so that, you know, I've got to give him credit for that. So if you but, understand but, the language he speaks, well, what, no, but, how do you interpret what he's doing now? Well, That's well, what well, I want to well, what he's doing, Yeah, but what he's doing now is, and this is the point, I, I make this point in the book as well, Akhil's quoted from uh, the last paragraph. Trump has set out recklessly and irresponsibly to divide America to, and to exploit and exacerbate divisions that are existing. Now, I, I can... You look... I have led this country. It's the greatest honour of my life. And every day I set out to unite Australians. I set out to reinforce our commitment to each other, our support for multiculturalism. I rejected those people who tried to peddle racism or division. Now, that's what a, that's what a leader should do. And, by the way, that is what most leaders in democracies do do. But what Trump sought to do, and he was supported in that, by the right-wing media, including that, particularly that owned by Murdoch, he set out to exacerbate those divisions and turn Americans against each other for his own political advantage. And why that, while that may have helped him electorally, it has left America more divided, more fractured and hence weaker uh, than it has been in years past. I mean, Paul Kelly, to his credit, has written eloquently about this tragic situation America finds itself in. But, you know, you just got to bear this in mind. Trump is not a conservative. He is not a conservative. Conservatives defend institutions. They are in favour of incremental change. Trump is an authoritarian populist. It is all about him. It was all, it, it's Trumpism. It's him. And he has put his own narcissistic, self-interested agenda ahead of everything else. And the big loser has been the United States and the only people that would genuinely get pleasure out of this are America's enemies. Bob Carr, he... how do you describe <clears throat> this moment? What is it that you think Donald Trump is doing right now? Is yeah, he I, I having tell you, a tantrum yeah, or what? i tell you what, what I think is happening now. The authoritarian populist is transmuting himself into something else, which is a proto-fascist. A proto-fascist. And I choose that term carefully. Uh, people well, throw what around... What is a proto-fascist? Yeah, well, 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 do you well, choose the proto or the fascist incipient, he, He's an incipient fascist because what he is doing now is nothing less than what Hitler did yeah. in Germany in the 1920s, yeah. which is saying there is a conspiracy that's robbed the people of their choice. Mm. It, is all it is all fraud. The election has been stolen from us. There is no evidence of this, not the remotest evidence, and I think it's to the disgrace of people uh, in corners of the American and Australian media who've taken this up mm. because it is telling people your electoral system... I won't, I won't describe America as a democracy because I don't think the Electoral College allows you to say America is a democracy, mm. but America is a republic with firmly entrenched freedoms in its constitution and with an electoral process, and Trump is becoming something other something more threatening than the authoritarian populist, he is sowing, he's embarked on a campaign that I think... I, I'm terrified for America. I think this campaign will run all the way to the 2024 presidential election, undermining faith in institutions that have been in place 
since the con Constitution was approved in 1789. But, Bob Carr, wouldn't, it, wouldn't an authoritarian have used <clears throat> a pandemic to seize control of every institution, to seize more power, to crack down, to remove people's liberties? He did the opposite. So you're saying he's not an authoritarian, I, I'm I, think that's, your I, think that's, I think that is a very generous view well, I, I, of, some, of, some, of someone who has retweeted tweets from outright Nazis, neo-Nazis, retweeted them. So, uh, someone who's prepared to endorse someone who calls for Dr Fauci to be beheaded and to have his head stuck on a stake. Someone who said of neo-Nazis... Someone who said yeah. of neo-Nazis in uh, Charlesburg that they, uh, they're good people on both sides of this argument in the streets. Very good now, people. Now, I, I could go on. There is a, there is a long... Well, I'm not going to let you this go on. Not, Paul Kelly, I'd, I'd like this you to is come not, in This here, is not please. normal political leadership. Are they turning well, it on a bit with all this... Well, look, he's, he's an authoritarian, proto-fascist? Look, we should say something about Biden, because Biden is the new president, and what's going to be absolutely critical for America and for the world is whether or not Biden can succeed as president. Now, he's got a lot against him, in particular Trump. Trump had two identities, as a president and as the leader of a popular movement. He's no longer the president, but he is still the leader of a popular movement. So he will lead his movement against Biden. Biden has got the office behind him, and Biden will have a lot of goodwill from the American people. But it's absolutely critical that Biden is seen to be a successful president. Now, one point here is interesting. Biden will know in his heart that he's going to be a one-term president. And this makes Biden a little bit different from most presidents. He'll have one go at it. And I think perhaps his sense of mission will be very, very galvanised for this one term. Now, that's an optimistic view, I know. And I am frightened of Trump. I am concerned about Trump. But it's really important, it's really important now that a lot of the people who supported Trump uh, a lot of the leaders who supported Trump, and particularly within the Republican Party, confront the situation here. They cannot allow Trump to remain their leader and running this campaign, this stab-in-the-back campaign, mm. that I didn't really lose, that I was stabbed in the back in a, in a phony conspiracy, in a fraudulent election. It's really important that that idea be challenged and put down aggressively.